My name is Timothy Clement. I am a grad graduate student at the University of Minnesota Duluth. My advisors, my advisors are Dr. Brock Hedegaard and Dr. Mia Hubler. And our research focuses on the calibration of a new creep and shrinkage model for ACI Committee 209. Um, the research goal is to calibrate and propose a new time dependent model for concrete. Uh, the reason why we are doing this is because ACI 209 uh, is old and outdated. It was made in 1982 and it is no longer supported by the committee. So our goal is to create a simple and effective creep and shrinkage model. And to make a more user-friendly model, we have been meeting with engineer designers who give us their input on what they wanna see in the model. Uh, doing this kind of gives us a guide for what equations we should be look, like looking for and like looking to creating. Uh, for instance, most of the parameters that we have calibrated are functions of concrete strength. Um, and this makes the equations very user friendly. Uh, here's an outline of what our research involves. Uh, there are four phases of our, our research. There was database preparation of the Northwestern University Creep and Shrinkage Database optimization on the models, uh, selecting the best model candidate, and reporting the recommendation of the new model to ACI 209. And right now, now we are currently on uh, starting phase four for shrinkage and starting phase two for creep. So I will dive into what we have done with shrinkage so far. But first, if you need a refresher or you are unfamiliar with creep or shrinkage, here's a little information that you should know. Uh, creep is defined as an increasing strain due to sustained stress. Uh, there are two types of creep, basic and drying. Basic creep occurs when there is no interaction with the surrounding environment and drying creep is the additional creep due to the drying of the concrete. Shrinkage is strain which occurs due to the moisture loss in the concrete and there are two primary types of shrinkage, drying and autogenous. Uh, drying shrinkage occurs due to water leaving the concrete and autogenous shrinkage occurs when water is consumed due to internal chemical hydration reactions called self-desiccation. And I should also mention that concrete submerged in water can swell, which increases the volume of a member, and we call this swelling. So for phase one, it involved using the Northwestern uh, University Creep and Shrinkage Database. It was created in 1978, and it has been uh, updated over the years with new information being added. Currently, it has around 1,400 creep curves and 1,800 shrinkage curves. And the mixed design for each test is listed in the database and then includes admixtures, mixture proportions, testing conditions, geometries and aggregate types for all these tests. And this information in the database made it possible for us to calibrate our model. And the tests with the same mix were bunched together into data sets. And we ended up with around 601 shrinkage data sets and 427 creep data sets. Now, at the beginning, we had five different models that we tried to fit. Models one and two had an additional aging parameter that would give us kind of bad plots. And the design engineers that we met with told us that they liked model three the best anyways. Uh, that's not to say we didn't gain any new information from fitting models one and two, but model three was an easy choice once we fixed parameter values because it was the most user-friendly model. And it gave us the best profile likelihood plots too. Uh, phase two of research involved developing the shrinkage models and optimizing them, but I will just explain model three, which was titled Coupled Poor Humidity, since it ended up being the model we chose to present. Now, model three is basically a poor relative humidity model with a total shrinkage coefficient. The first change in poor relative humidity that I will talk about is due to self-desiccation. And in this equation here, T represents the time in days and T sub B, represents the duration of uh, time which it required for self-desiccation to begin. And there is also a self-desiccation factor A and the time factor B. And these were found looking at data for poor relative humidity. And if you look at the plot, this data can be fit by changing A and B values. And this can only be achieved when setting the T sub B to 0 0.25 days. And for design modeling, relationships for A and B based on uh, concrete strength were desired. So based on assumed values for strengths of the mixed designs, the expressions for A and B were found below. 
Now, drying shrinkage depends on diffusion, so it must meet the requirements of diffusion theory. And the hyperbolic tangent in this poor relative humidity equation is used to satisfy all three requirements. And it was adopted from the B4 model, which is another creep and shrinkage model that has been established in the engineering field. The expression for the, uh, the, char the characteristic of drying time, the tau sub dry located, located below the main equation was found. The K sub S term equals the size factor based on the shape of the specimen being tested. That's located to the right. Uh, SH represents uh, an unknown shrinkage halftime parameter, which we found by calculating the profile likelihood for each data set, which I will discuss in a bit. And the K sub H factor, which is the first half of the equation, depends on the ambient relative humidity and has traditionally been a cubic function. Now that autogenous shrinkage is independent of relative humidity and in older tests, the combination of autogenous and drying shrinkage was not accounted for when calculating total shrinkage values. But tests conducted by Pintala and Rutman, which are reported as only drying shrinkage, led us to this expression shown. And the value of 0.5 assures that the drying coefficient is less than a linear function that would be applicable given, a, given linear diffusion. So in other words, our proposed factor value keeps us below the linear diffusion limit. Getting to the meat of our model, the assumption that shrinkage is proportional to the change in poor relative humidity resulted in us creating a poor relative humidity model first before creating our shrinkage model. The, the coupling of change in poor relative humidity due to the self-desiccation and drying resulted in us creating a loss function. And so in this Venn diagram, we have our change in relative humidity due to self-desiccation and drying. So we had to remove the middle part to get the total change in poor relative humidity, which represent, is represented by these equations right of the Venn diagram. Uh, this brings us to our shrinkage design expressions. And as you can see, it is the same equation for the total poor relative humidity as seen on the last slide, except there's P. And P is another unknown parameter found calculating the profile likelihood of data sets, which is titled the shrinkage coefficient. Uh, we have a swelling term with another uh, fitting parameter, SW. This swelling equation was found by fitting shrinkage curves from Brooks test data located in the plots below. And it should be known that this, is, this equation is only for concrete, which will be underwater to calculate swelling. So I've mentioned that we had these unknown parameters. And so we had P, the shrinkage coefficient, SH, the shrinkage halftime factor, U, the activation energy constant, and SW, the swelling factor. And I found all these by taking the profile likelihood of the database attached to our model. And I'll walk through an example on this next slide. So this is just an example of how it works. And this is actually an example for creep, but it's the same idea for shrinkage and it works the same way. So we have our compliance for creep here, J, and it has variables P1 to P4, which represent the parameters I need to fix. So the way this works is you can fix one parameter and find values for the other parameters with that fixed value, uh, which gives me best fits and bounds, which I plot in Excel, which I'll show you in a bit. The x-axis represents the value of the parameter I am setting, and the y-axis represents the mean square error. And so you want a low mean square error value. In this example, the mean square error is set to five. Uh, the best fit is represented by the vertex of the parabola while the bounds are located where the vault values equal, where the values of the mean square error equal five. And in this process, I fit the parameters in multiple different scenarios to get the final values that I put into the model. The following plots that I'm about to show you represent the full result of calculating the profile likelihood for these uh, parameters uh, with the values listed to the right. The markers in these plots represent different cement types with different colors. The y-axis is the parameter value and the x-axis is the strength. The first value that was fit was the parameter U, which equaled a constant 5,000 Kelvin. And it is an activation energy constant for time and temperature adjusted values, which I did not cover in this presentation. But the swelling parameter SW came out to be a constant as well, equaling 40. Uh, the shrinkage halftime factor SH was found to be a constant too. That was 0 
And the most important parameter, the shrinkage coefficient ended up equaling a power law equation. And this value for this equation was rounded for de design simplicity. And the expression is dependent on the strength of con uh, concrete and which is the, the de desired in design models. But G equals the aggregate volume fraction and the aggregate volume fraction has a big impact on total shrinkage because the amount of aggregate reduces the amount of total shrinkage that can occur. So cement is where shrinkage occurs and in concrete. And so like, and the more aggregate volume there is in the mix, the less cement there volume there is for shrinkage to happen. The aggregate volume fraction can be found using the two of the following equations to the right. Uh, the middle one is if you have mixed design values, the bottom one is if you just have the strength value. But as a final resort, setting G equal to two thirds is also works in most cases. So after all of the parameters were fixed, uh, the predict prediction and measured strains from the uh, NU database were plotted on the same graph. And a perfect prediction model would make all these markers fall on the black line. In our case, this is pretty good, but this, this plot is only for total shrinkage predictions. This plot is for autogenous shrinkage predictions. And this plot is to show drying shrinkage predictions. Now, shrinkage kind of stole the show today, so I will just briefly cover the creep model. The underlying variables represent the unknown parameters that I will fit in the similar method that I did with the shrinkage model. It was formulated with solidification theory in mind, which is a theory that provides a sound ba basis describing aging time dependent behavior for concrete. To summarize it quickly, if at time zero, you have a concrete box that is empty, but as time increases, so does your volume. And if stress is applied to the box, the new volume feels that stress only if it has formed. And each, each layer doesn't age, but the added layer of the volume is what represents aging. And this has been used before in past models. We also remove divergence through integration in our model, which can be a problem when pre-stress loss instances where loads change or are added. But in conclusion, we found that a coupled poor relative humidity model can capture both mechanisms of shrinkage using a single total shrinkage coefficient. The profile likelihood method helped us include the mass amount of data we needed to look at in order to calibrate our shrinkage model. We plan to repeat the same process for creep, which should be a lot easier now that we know how to calibrate a time dependent model. Uh, I would like to thank all these firms listed here. We consulted with them choosing our models and equations and we are very thankful for their time. I would also like to thank the ACI Foundation for funding my research. And lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Hedegaard and Dr. Hubler for advising me throughout my research. So thank you very much. <laughs>